Can God change your life in the next 30 minutes? I believe you're watching right now because God has something special for you. Join me for Jewish Voice and you'll discover how Bible prophecy is coming to pass before our very eyes and why you need to stand with Israel. You can play a role in God's end time plan. Find out how on Jewish Voice. Welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and why you should stand with Israel. I'm Rabbi Jonathan Burnus, and today my guest is going to share a secret key to world revival. He's written a new book called Romans 9-11, and it's time to sound the alarm. Grant, welcome to the program. Grant Ferry, everyone. Thanks, Great to have you, my friend. Hey, God's doing, God's doing a new thing on the earth. He's doing a new thing, and he's calling you to be part of it. He doesn't want you to be a bystander. He wants you to be involved. Get involved. Amen. Amen. We've entered the second jubilee. The first jubilee, the messianic body, began to form and come alive. And I sense since the, since the shofar blew a couple of years ago, we've entered a new period. And God is beginning to lay a pathway for us to find this crucial reconciliation in the family of God between believing Jews and believing Gentiles now that Israel's awakening. And I really believe, Jonathan, I, 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 I think you agree with me on this, that, that it is foundational to the heart of the Father and Yeshua's heart cry of John 17, that this breach in the family would be restored. The Father is drawing his family to himself. And um, he's not, when Yeshua returns, when Jesus returns, he's, he's not coming back to Salt Lake City or, or, um, or, or New Jersey. Right, or even Rome. Or even Rome. He's coming back to a Jewish city. And I believe now the Lord is laying down a pathway for the Gentile side of the family to return to, its, to the fullness of its identity in and with Israel now that there is a remnant to, to reconnect with. Well, I want to talk about our identity together and, and, and your new book, Romans 9-11, uh, 9 I really like that because it is time to sound the alarm. Let me backtrack a little bit, though, and just have you introduce yourself. You're a Jewish believer uh, with a very unique calling. What's a nice Jewish boy doing believing in Jesus? Um, I was a young man um, in the 80s searching for truth, and I, uh, I ran into a young Christian girl who had a Jewish grandmother, I believe, and she had a great love for the Jewish people. And um, through trial and error, the Holy Spirit had taught her how to bring the gospel back to a Jewish person so that despite my resistance when we would go out and she would share and, and talk about the Bible and talk about, about Jesus to me, um, she began to lay down a pathway that was almost Jewish for me to understand that, that the gospel is Jewish. Now, why were you so resistant to begin with? I think inherently, Jonathan, all of us Jews, especially from, from the previous generations, we've we've had 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years of persecution against us in the name of Jesus. So in our bloodline, and I, I write about this actually in my first book, The New Covenant Prophecy, for, for Christians to understand when they're bringing the gospel to Jewish people, we need to learn the inherent resistances that Jewish people face when we're trying to bring them the gospel. Did you have that misconception that Christians were responsible for the Holocaust, didn't, for the Crusades. Didn't for, we all? Yeah, yeah <laughs> indeed. But I don't think many Christians understand this, that, right. that the, 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 the Nazis claimed to be Christians, that the Crusaders marched with a cross at the head of their armies as they devastated Jewish right. communities, raped the women, killed the men. Uh, 
the Spanish Inquisition in the name of Christ and Christianity banished Jews, uh, forced them to convert by the edge of the sword, murdered them in the name of Christ and Christianity. W w Christians don't understand that history. Um, I think, I think I'm, um, the most important thing for us now from, from the Gentile side of the family is to try and gain a deeper understanding of that to give us more sympathy and understanding in the way that we would, would lay a pathway for them to receive the gospel. And Maria, this, that was her name, um, she shared the gospel in a way with me where she, she never quoted New Testament scriptures. She only used Hebrew. She quoted Hebrew scriptures. Really? And she spoke New Covenant in her own words. Yeah. And wow. um, I was drawn to jealousy. Because while I was a seeking, I was, uh, in the time I was in the, um, I was into the new age and a little bit into the occult, and I was understanding spiritual things, but they weren't satisfying me. And within several weeks of becoming friends with this, with, uh, with, with this, with this lady, she, I knew there was a dimension between her and God. And here I was, supposed to be one of the chosen people, Right, and I'm talking to God and getting no communication. Right, and she's in dialogue with and him. And that's your responsibility. You have a priesthood responsibility to the Jewish person that God has put into your life, uh, co-worker, uh, extended family member, neighbor, and He wants you to provoke them to jealousy. Romans 11, right, verse 11 talks about the Gentiles being grafted in to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. So there's a debt of responsibility, Grant, right, that every Christian has back to the Jewish people that were faithful to bring them the gospel. And this is a role that I truly believe that most of the church is about to enter into in a much deeper way to fulfill its call to draw the Jewish people to jealousy to love them on account of the patriarchs, never to be arrogant thinking that we have replaced them. Well, let's talk about your book, Romans 911. Uh, it is time to sound the alarm. Talk about why you wrote the book and what you, wa what you want Christians or what the Lord wants Christians to understand. Romans 911 is a comprehensive study book uh, of this entire subject in the reconnection in the one you met. It is not meant to be a quick read. It's meant to be. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not. It's it's meant to be it's used as a Bible study book it's a thick to book. Foot, to help to fully restore us. And what you know, uh, um, I think of the, uh, uh, the uh, on Passover when the the young child asked the four questions. Manish Tana Hasefa Hazeh. Why is this book different from every other book? that you may have on your shelf or that you're, re you, you're reading now? And, the, and the, the two main answers to that question are one, it is different because it deals with the issues on both sides of the family, both Jewish and Gentile, that we need to face, that the enemy is still having influence over, keeping us apart. This reuniting in the family of God is an essential element to the glory that the Father is waiting to pour on us as we help him in the family of God to restore the unity in his family. So secondly, it gives uh, practical elements of what the reconnection in the man, one new man would look like between the uh, church and the messianic bodies, and then it provides a prayer strategy to help us to move into it, which is an essential element of hey, this let process. Me, let me Make it plain and simple. Why do you need to read this? Why should this matter to you? Because we're talking about revival and we're talking about the return of Christ, the Messiah, to the earth. If you want revival, if you want Jesus to return, then this book is really important for you to get. I want to invite you, become a partner with this ministry. We don't sell materials. We sow materials, we create and sow materials into the lives of our partners as they sow into this ministry and enable us to reach Jewish people with free medical care, dental care, eye care in some of the remotest parts of the world, Jewish people and their neighbors in need, 
to earn the right, the platform to share the gospel because the gospel is what transforms people's lives. I want to invite you, become a monthly partner with this ministry. We'll get you Grants Book 911. You need to get it. Also a mezuzah to put on your door. And if you'll support us monthly, this absolutely gorgeous scroll, in case scroll, this is the Torah, the first five books of Moses in the Hebrew language. Just a replica of what Jewish people have in synagogues today behind the ark. And you have access into that holy of holies. I want you to get involved. Here's how. Before Yeshua can return, a reconnection must take place between Christians and Jews. The role you play in this end time transformation is vital in fulfilling prophecy. Grant Barry has devoted himself to bringing the knowledge of this important end time event to the body of Christ. His new book entitled Romans 911 is a comprehensive study on the reconnection of Jews and Gentiles and will give you a clear understanding of the part you play in this end time revelation. Jonathan wants to get this informative work in your hands as soon as possible. As you support Jewish voice outreaches with a gift of $40, We'll get Romans 911 out to you right away and we'll include this unique Israel mezuzah for you to place on the doorpost of your home. As you join Jonathan today as a monthly supporter of Jewish Voice with a gift of just $30 a month, you'll not only receive the book and the mezuzah, but to say thank you for your continued monthly support, Jonathan will include this beautiful Torah scroll shadow box. It comes as you see it, framed and ready for you to proudly display in your home. Again, you will receive this entire bundle of resources for your generous support of just $30 a month. And remember, your gift to Jewish Voice will provide medical care to one individual every month. I'm urging you to become a monthly partner to help us help Jewish people and their neighbors in desperate need in Africa. Please call the 800 number on the screen and let our operator know what level of giving you wish to participate in. If you prefer, you can always choose to give online at jewishvoice.tv, or you can also give by mailing your gift to the address on the screen. Jonathan is encouraging you to become a monthly supporter as the need to help these dear people is ongoing and urgent. Remember, as a result of your giving today, you will be changing someone's life by giving them the gift of clean water, medicine, dental care, eye care, and the life-saving knowledge of Yeshua. Thank you in advance for your generous support of Jewish Voice and for making a difference in so many lives through your sacrifice. Now, let's rejoin Jonathan and Grant. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, my guest is Grant Berry, and it's time to sound the alarm. The times they are changing, Romans 911. You had a, 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 a um, prophetic picture that you shared with me. I want you to share that because this is a very significant moment in history, Grant, and God's inviting you to be part of that moment. Don't miss your opportunity. So think of a, a railroad, a, a, a train coming into a major city um, towards right before it tracks into the city, there is a switch in, in the actual railroad tracks. And this is what I believe, this is where we're at. We, everyone has a sense we're in the last days, we're mm -hmm. close. Yet, there is a, uh, almost an about face that the Lord is, is, is calling us to, to enter into this, this, this restoration, this, this Joel 28, the final glory being poured out, the power of the Holy Spirit with a greater measure, there must be a reconciliation in, in the family. And um, now that Israel is awakened, God is calling his family to reunite. And this has been quite foreign from for the Gentile side, it, it's, 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 it's foreign for the Gentile side of the family because for 1,700 years, when the church merged with Rome, which was already anti-Semitic, and they began to disconnect from their Jewish roots and their heritage and then cut it off and then go after Jewish and Gentile believers that were associating 
to their Jewish roots, the church inherited a separate identity right. away from Israel, away from the physical people of Israel. And as we know, um, the Gentile side of the family developed uh, teachings, replacement teachings, replacement theology, later fulfillment theology, and anti-Semitism seeped in, into the, the heart and mindset of the church. God, we are now, as, as the train tracks move, we are at the end of Paul's dissertation in Romans 11. I have given you all over to disobedience it, when it comes to this family equation that I may have mercy on you all. That's, you know, there's truth to the fact that the church is Israel, but never without her connection to her. Right, of course. Okay, so those teachings developed a disconnected mindset. So, Holy Spirit, what we write about in Romans 9-1-1 is we, it, it, it's not, it's not the, uh, the most popular goosebump type message in the beginning because we need to face the realities, Jonathan, that of issues that are keeping us apart and the ones that the devil is using. The Father is looking to pour out the mercy oil, take his sword and break off those influences. And then when we come into a true repentance, because let's be honest, repentance, I sometimes I think repentance in the 21st century is a little bit cheap. Paul taught his disciples to prove their repentance by their deeds. What is true repentance when it comes to the one you man? When it cut, first, the Lord's looking for us to remarry and be who we were, but yet with an Hebraic foundation that we can now be restored to without getting religious about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm really impressed with this book, Grant, because I think you, first of all, it's prophetic, so I think this is the heart of God. And anything that reveals the heart of God, I think we need to be aware of, we need to connect with. So the heart of God is in this. The, you're, you're, I see you as somebody that has your, your, your uh, head resting on the breast of Messiah, like John. Amen. And I think that this book is a, is a result of that, but it's also extremely comprehensive in giving us a picture of what the church looks like and what has to change. And you deal with things that I don't think I've ever read <laughs> in any other book, uh, really, that it's, 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 it's so deep. And uh, I, I really get a sense that this book reveals the times we live in as well. It's the heart of God at this set time in history. Right. My hope and prayer, Jonathan, is that within seven to 10 years, Romans 911 will be obsolete. And the reason for that is that we would have entered the Father's drawing of his love for us to come together as Jew and Gentile, reunite the one you meant. The second part of the book, the first part explains the reconnection. The second part puts legs in a face to it. What it's it like for the messianic body in America and in the nations to connect with the church? What's it like for the messianic body to connect with the Arabs and, and, the, and, and the, uh, the Christians in, in Israel? We need to, to think about what, what it actually, the changes and the adjustments that we need to make. And believe it or not, the, the adjustments are not that big. Yeah. The issue is getting us into it. Yes. And that's where the stronghold is. It begins is. with understanding. And if you understand the heart of God, you know, Jesus, Jesus prayed his last prayer, his great prayer, and John 17, that jo they may be one. Jonathan, and it's not just, it's not just uh, the Gentile side of the family that needs to move into this. It's, it's the Messianic side too. Oy vey. We've got so <laughs> many issues. And when you read chapter 8, which is part 3 of the book, 7, 8, and 9, the, the, these are the obstacles to the reconnection in the monument. When you read about some of our deep-rooted rejectedness and how it affects us and how it's caused some of our insecurities and, 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 our, and our, our emergence in the olive tree, being, being uh, 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 rejected by our own. You can't be Jewish and believe in Jesus anymore. And then coming back to the church and saying, hey, I'm Jewish, I gotta do my Jewish things. I, I gotta, you don't understand me. And then the church said, no, you, you, there's no Jew or Gentile. I mean, you can't do that stuff anymore. So, so the Messianic body grew up for the first Jubilee 
with, with, with some insecurities. We need a course correction. I want to make this really simple yes. for you so you understand. Reconciliation. You may have a loved one, a spouse, a, a child, a, a grandchild, a sibling that's been separated from you, and you're crying out, Lord, I want to be reconciled to that person. Well, reconciliation has a, is a process, and the top button, as one friend said, of reconciliation begins with Jew and Gentile becoming one, and then that reconciliation flows into your life, into your family, into your situation. I want to encourage you to get Romans 9, 1, 1. Romans 9 through 11 begins with Paul saying that he would give up his very salvation for his own people, the people of Israel. God wants you to understand his heart. You want to grow closer to him? Understand his heart. I want to get this out to you. Romans 9, 1, 1, along with this beautiful mezuzah that you can put on your door as you partner with this ministry. We also want to send you your monthly partnership we want to send you this absolutely gorgeous Torah scroll and case Torah scroll with the five books of Moses in Hebrew. Uh, it, it's absolutely gorgeous, and we want to sow it into your life as you sow into this ministry and enable us to reach the Jewish people and their neighbors with the good news of their Messiah. I want you to get involved. Here's how. Before Yeshua can return, a reconnection must take place between Christians and Jews. The role you play in this end time transformation is vital in fulfilling prophecy. Grant Barry has devoted himself to bringing the knowledge of this important end time event to the body of Christ. His new book entitled Romans 9:11, is a comprehensive study on the reconnection of Jews and Gentiles and will give you a clear understanding of the part you play in this end time revelation. Jonathan wants to get this informative work in your hands as soon as possible. As you support Jewish Voice Outreaches with a gift of $40, we'll get Romans 911 out to you right away and will include this unique Israel mezuzah for you to place on the doorpost of your home. As you join Jonathan today as a monthly supporter of Jewish Voice with a gift of just $30 a month, you'll not only receive the book and the mezuzah, but to say thank you for your continued monthly support, Jonathan will include this beautiful Torah scroll shadow box it comes as you see it, framed and ready for you to proudly display in your home. Again, you will receive this entire bundle of resources for your generous support of just $30 a month. And remember, your gift to Jewish Voice will provide medical care to one individual every month. I'm urging you to become a monthly partner to help us help Jewish people and their neighbors in desperate need in Africa. Please call the 800 number on the screen and let our operator know what level of giving you wish to participate in. If you prefer, you can always choose to give online at jewishvoice.tv, or you can also give by mailing your gift to the address on the screen. Jonathan is encouraging you to become a monthly supporter as the need to help these dear people is ongoing and urgent. Remember, as a result of your giving today, you will be changing someone's life by giving them the gift of clean water, medicine, dental care, eye care, and the life-saving knowledge of Yeshua. Thank you in advance for your generous support of Jewish Voice and for making a difference in so many lives through your sacrifice. It's time now for Ask the Rabbi. Welcome back to our Ask the Rabbi segment. We've received some great questions from you, our viewers, and I encourage you to write, and one of your questions may be read in an upcoming program. So let's jump right in. Our first question comes uh, to us from Grant, and Grant is uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Shalom to everybody in Birmingham. Love Church of the Highlands. Chris Hodges, what a great, great uh, church. Uh, what does the term remnant of Israel mean? Remnant of Israel. Wonderful question, Grant. Thanks for writing. Remnant of Israel refers to the division in Romans 11 that Paul makes between Jewish people that uh, are blind to their Messiah, they don't have eyes to see, and those that have embraced Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah. And Paul talks about this remnant 
this, this, that which remains literally a, a small group among in Israel that has had their eyes open to the truth. So he uh, defends uh, that God is faithful to the Jewish people by pointing to himself. And he says, I am part of that remnant. I'm a Jew who believes in Jesus. Uh, and just as there was uh, a preserved group in the time of Elijah, so today there's a preser preserved group, a remnant among the whole, a select group that uh, understands uh, God's uh, promise in the Messiah, fulfilled in the person of Yeshua the Messiah. Uh, so remnant is that which is set apart. It's talking about Jewish believers in Jesus today. Great question. We have time for just one more. It's uh, from uh, Brennan in Wayne, Ohio. I would like to incorporate some of the Jewish festivals into my family traditions. Where is a good place to start? And Brennan, I would say the Passover. Jesus celebrated the Passover Seder with his disciples. We have the materials available to conduct a Passover Seder in your own home and show, demonstrate how Jesus, Yeshua, is the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, that takes away the sins of the world. We've been brought now out of the uh, Egypt of sin, just as the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt and the angel of death passes over us. A great place to start, a celebration of a Messianic Passover Seder. Well, if you have prayer needs or you'd like more information about our minister, you can log on to our website. It's jewishvoice.tv. I wanna pray over you right now because I know that many of you that are watching have prayer needs. We, we, we get lots of letters, and I want you to know that we pray for every need. So if you have a financial need today, if you have a need for physical healing, if you have a need for the restoration of a loved one back into your life, if you're fighting substance abuse, whatever it is, God cares. God loves you, and so do we. So, Lord, I pray. Just join with me in faith right now. I pray for everyone watching right now that has a need that that need will be met. I command healing, and I declare over you by the stripes of Messiah, by his wounds you were healed, you are healed. I speak divine provision. I say the rent shall be paid. Those bills will be paid in Jesus' name, and I thank you for reconciliation. I thank you for restoration of loved ones, and I declare over you, as for me and my household, your household, you shall be saved. Your family shall be saved. Your child will be saved. Your grandchild will come back to the Lord in Jesus' name. Well, as I finish the program, I want to remind you also, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says they shall prosper that love thee, Psalm 122, 6. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel, pray for the Jewish people, pray for God's peace plan to be fulfilled through the Prince of Peace, Yeshua the Messiah. Until next week, this is Jonathan Bernice saying shalom, and God bless you.